Uh, I'm, my name is Jessica, this is Mirelle, Samanda, Kenneth, and Amanda. And we are going to talk about the warehouse temperature at WSU Clinic. So, uh, in this project, we were working at the WSU Creamery in a project about the warehouse temperature. Uh, in the warehouse temperature, at uh, the warehouse, the product just come when it, it's ready and it just stays in the storage uh, until it, it is shipped. Ship it. And so the creamer annex has a cooler that is set at 45 Fahrenheit, but it may not be keeping consistent temperature. Uh, and this is a concern for the creamery because improper storage temperature could affect the quality of the cheese and also could cause problems with the reputation and consumer's approval. Uh, our contact at the creamery was Dave D. So the problem is taken. Uh, the, the initial goal of this project was to find out why the, the, the cooler in the warehouse, warehouse temperature uh, was not keeping the, the consistent temperature, which should be um, around five, 45 Fahrenheit uh, plus or minus 2 Fahrenheit, according to the staff at the creamer, and then find a solution for this problem. Uh, in our first visit there, uh, we've been told that they have an alarm that goes off when the, the temperature goes too high or too, lo or too low. But we didn't know the exact temperature it, the alarm would go off. So last week we asked them what, what, what is the temperature and they are not sure about that. but. It may be when the temperature is go to 40 Fahrenheit or 50 Fahrenheit. Uh, in our first visit, we've been told that the initial, the, the major problem was occurring at the door, and just when they opened the door to ship the the product. But after the, the measure phase, I found out that that almost all the points where with, uh, with temperatures outside the specification limits. The only one that is within the specification is the side point that is 43 Fahrenheit. Uh, so why the temperature is important? Uh, the temperature is important because uh, it may affect seriously the quality, the quality of the product. It may affect the physical and chemical characteristics and there may be some uh, spoilage on the product. Um, and af affecting the quality of the cheese, uh, it would also affect the affected customers of the, the cougar goat cheese, cougar goat cheese, because they, uh, and because they are expecting a great quality of the cheese, um, if they get a cheese with bad quality, it will affect the reputation of the creamery. Uh, in our first phase of our project, we tried to state some goals. And our goal state, statement was, at the beginning, to determine if the temperature wa uh, was within acceptable limits and consistent. However, um, as our first major problem was only by the door, we wanted to do it in the rest of the of the warehouse as well, and see if the temperature was uh, between the the range acceptable, which was from 43 Fahrenheit to 47 Fahrenheit, with the optimum of 45 Fahrenheit. And in case of finding the unacceptable range, uh, unacceptable temperature. We would create the suggestions that would prevent the inconsistency of the temperature and the temperature change from happening. Uh, as the project scope in the beginning, we had that 
we did we did not want to spend money to re, to get our project done. Uh, that's why we borrowed the equipment to make the measurements of the temperature. Uh, as we had the cooler size of 15,500 feet cubic, we decided to, to check uh, once, uh, in a week and twice, only twice a day in 10 points of the warehouse. However, uh, when, we want, when we went to the creamery to make the measurement, we changed our uh, this, this scope and we made it as, uh, also in a week. However, it was in, in each one hour and in four points of the, the warehouse. And we also wanted to get our project done to accomplish our project in within four months. Oh, our initial improvement goals. As it was done, is what I thought, in the beginning, in our first phase, uh, we were just focused on the problem by the door, because our first major problem as Jessica said before, was only by the door when the bar door was open to to the product get come in and come out. So our first in, uh, improvement goal was to flap the the seal in the in the cold even when the door is open. Uh, we we also thought of using lower temperatures for the days when they they are shipping. Do not use the large door unless they need to move a lot of goods because the major pro problem uh, would be located in two different doors. One small one and one big one where the large amount of products were, were coming, coming in and coming out. And, oops, sorry. And do not store the products close to the doors where the major problem was located. <coughs> Next, we actually moved into our measurement phase and we were provided with four thermocouples from the lab at WSU and the food science department. And the thermocouples, it was just a simple little box that would we could set it to anything we wanted and we set it to record the temperature at every hour on the hour for, we set it for a week straight. Uh, then there was also the computer in the lab that we could collect the data from the actual thermocouples themselves, and then tape to hold up the thermocouples, and then each probe that was connected to the thermocouple because it was a separate cord that measured that had its own like thermometer and stuff, and so it gave us about a six foot range uh, steps. First, we had to sync the thermocouples with the computer, each four of them, and write which side and everything that we were measuring it on. Uh, when Sam and I went to the actual creamery annex, which is out on Grimes, it's not actually connected to the creamery itself, uh, we decided to place one, because it's so big, one on the back wall, where there's about, it's, there's nothing really stored there. Right now, they're putting shelves up so they can't put product there. Uh, on the left side wall, which we have a diagram of this on the next slide, uh, about half, like as high as I could reach, which was like halfway, three quarters, a quarter of the way up. Uh, thermocouple by the front door and then one like almost exactly in the middle of the warehouse where they had this wall that we could put it on. And then we set that, let it run for a good week and then we synced it again and did all of our analyzation of that data. Now here's our diagram, and over here, point four is the door, and there's actually two doors. There's the big door that they use everything to take freights and stuff, like all the big pallets and stuff out, and then they just had a small normal sized door. <coughs> so, and our original thing was use the big door as little as possible. Uh, point three was it was about right in the middle. Um, it was on a big wall, and that's kind of where the big open area started, where they had nothing really set up in the creamery annex yet. 
uh, point one was the back wall, uh, the very edge where they just had really just some stuff lying because they were getting ready to set it up. They hadn't set it up yet. And then point two was the side wall. Uh, and also it was less lit really than point one because point one had so much open area. And then there was also the main fan units were on this side of the wall for ventilation. And then our actual measurement charts, this is just one day because we took obviously every hour on the hour for seven days straight and this we just decided to provide Monday for you. Um, here we can see a trend of in the morning it's higher and then at some point we have our upper limit of about 50 uh, and it obviously this point crosses that so it went above even above the standards that we had set of only two degrees range uh, and it, originally they told us that 50 degrees was like it, it shouldn't really go past that uh, same thing and this was for the middle exactly the point in the middle by the door we same trend uh, had the point that went above and then the middle side had the smallest range, but it also shows cycling. So for some reason it would go up and then come back down, go up and come back down. Consistently for most days, we saw these same trends for each point. So it wasn't, and we talked about that in our analyzed phase, like what caused that. And then the back, which we discovered was a real problem because it was about 50 degrees morning until people left at about four when it finally went back down and then at around midnight it would go back down and then for some 11 it goes down and then midnight it came back up okay so to analyze all of that data for all the seven days we decided to do a 2a ANOVA test comparing the placement in the cooler and the time of day and so our null hypothesis for this was that there was no variation in temperature in the different places of the cooler. There's no variation in temperature at the time of day and there's no interaction between the placement and the time of day. And an interaction means that a certain place in the cooler time of day would have a larger significant difference than if they were compared to separately. And so for this we compared um, four times a day. We did 12 p.m., 12 a.m., 6 p.m., and 6 a.m. were four times a day. And we did all the four places in the pool. So this is what our results were from QI macros that we ran. And it shows that our F values for both time of day, time of day was sample, time of day was the placement and columns was the, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> sample was the placement and columns was the time of day. And we can reject both of those hypotheses because our F value was greater than our F critical value and our P values were less than 0 0.05. But for interaction, we could not reject because our F value was greater than our F critical value and our P value was greater than 0 0.05. So this means that there is a variation in placement of the cooler and time of day, because we are rejecting all hypothesis, but there was no interaction between placement in the cooler and time of day. But from this data, we can't tell how many significant differences there were or where it was, if it was one day, all the days. So we decided to continue our analysis and do Tukey's HSC. And the bold, which doesn't really show up very well in here, shows all the significant differences. So for the thermocouples, all of the thermocouples were significantly different from each other, except for the middle and the door. Those are the only ones that were not significantly different from each other. So the back was different than the middle, the back was different from the door, the middle side was different from the middle. And for time of day, 12 p.m. was different than all of them, which is right in the middle of the day. 12 a.m., 6 a.m., and 6 p.m. did not have significant differences. And when looking at our control charts, you can tell that it's a higher significant difference. And we have some suggestions for that. Um, 
So after we have made these uh, measurements, we thought about some possible causes for the problem, the inconstant of the temperature. And one possible cause would be the inadequate ventilation. So the areas that has less fans are has a higher temperature uh, has a higher temperature than areas that have more fans. So in the back of the cooler there is uh, less fans, so it could could explain why the temperature there is higher. And also in the middle side of the cooler there is more fans, and it would explain why in the middle it's cooler. So another possible cause would be the lights. So certain areas of the cold are more are bright, brighter, mm -hmm. and some are darker. So uh, in the middle side, the cooler it's uh, darker, is darker. So it would explain why the temperature that it's lower, and also in the back front in the middle, these these areas uh, are more bright, are brighter. So. This also would explain why the temperature there is so high. And also the time of the day would be a possible cause because we have in the morning, the afternoon, a higher temperature than at the, at the night. So we know uh, through the measurements, we know that at 12 p.m. is the most significant uh, time of the day. So it's when we have the higher highest temperature. So all of the, the most improvements needs to occur at this time of the day, at 12 p.m. <laughs> okay, uh, after we thought about some possible scales, we thought about some uh, improvements. So improvement would be uh, adequate ventilation. So put more fans on the water house so it would help the air flows better and would lower the temperature. Also, an uh, efficient cooler light would help. Uh, uh, thicker <coughs> insulation, so the outside environment would not affect so much inside of the cooler. And uh, reflective roofing, uh, a better temperature awareness, because as we said before, uh, the current told us that there is only one thermometer that uh, sends a signal to the facilities. And as we could see, if the, this thermometer uh, would uh, working properly, now the alarm was, would be goes off because the temperature is 15 degrees. So it should uh, be alarming right now and it is not. So we need a better temperature awareness. And an idea is for more thermometers on the water house because there has only one and as we could see through the our analysis, there is no just one point that it's higher. We have different temperature in the whole uh, water house so it would be better if we just put more thermo thermometers there to see. And also an uh, alert system for each individual thermometer. So as we have a higher temperature in the back, right now we we'll, would we'll have the alarm going on right now. And if in the door, it, because if we put the thermometer only in one place, we will not be certain that it's only that temperature in all warehouse. So uh, Jesus, is there any question? I did have one question. Back in your introduction, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you mentioned something about how the different temperatures, if they you know started to drop a little bit, then the preferred amount that uh, you'd also have spoilage, but you would have a quality change in the cheese. Could you guys go over what you mean by a quality change? Well, temperature fluctuation in any food when is not ideal, so that's what we are okay. talking about. Then having go from 40 to 50 degrees all the time is not. So, so would you say that was a more uh, a textural property that's going to be affected or yeah. just texture? Because it, it can affect the maturation of the cheese. 
Yeah. Okay. Do you think perhaps maybe in some of the areas, uh, if you were to do this project again, you could measure on um, the areas that might have dropped a little bit too much um, and actually measure the cheese on a sample yeah, and see how their rheological real, properties compared? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. That would probably, because we're obviously occupying the product, and that would cost a little bit, whereas this was completely, there was no cost. So. <clears throat> do these fans for the refrigeration run all the time, or do they cycle with the refrigeration? From what I mean, do the fans what on all the time, and then the refrigeration <coughs> just cycles the evaporators behind them, or do um, the fans come on with the evaporators? We didn't ask that. But from what I know, they're on all the time. Yeah, from what we know, they're on all the time. No. No? They cycle? No. Yeah. They were on yeah. when we were there. <laughs> so these would explain this. Mm -hmm. That would explain this. And my understanding is that uh, it brings on one at a time okay. as it senses it needs it. So if they're only measuring one spot, there's obviously some areas of the warehouse that uh, we're not getting the right temperature. So. Any more questions? What about the orientation of the building? Actually, I have not seen this part there. Um, <clears throat> which is like North, south, east, west, as far as like um, the, the sun, back, like the, the sun hitting the building or whatever it is. The side wall is north. The side wall is north, which would be the, the one that we didn't measure. The Can we see the diagram? We'll yes, go back to the diagram. Yeah. Will you full screen? Just hit the laser pointer button. The laser? Yeah. Oh. That's an F5 command, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. There you go. Okay, so that faces Moscow. That's north. So that would be right. number two. That's north. It is north. Oh, I'm getting disoriented apparently. <laughs> that's north. Which there. And that's also. But the warehouse. <laughs> the warehouse is like. <laughs> I know. I'm just trying to figure out. Two's north. Yeah. If the door is by yeah, number four, this, this then the yeah, that's the door. This, the door is by number two. This is the door of yeah. the the door to get into the whole building that would be like down here. Yeah, so it's on the west side. In the uh, actually, it's more of a squarish shape than that is drawn here. This is extended. This is not to scale. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Okay, let's go to that your temperature logs. Okay. So if you can't really see on here, but 12 p.m. where is right here, and this is about 4 p.m. on each day. This is about 3 p.m. So all of them show getting really cold on the right hand side, mm -hmm. but they don't start off really cold on the left hand side. So what happens? Because it's the it would go into the next day. But then I he, that's a big jump, is what he's saying, from 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Especially on the back, yeah. for it to go from 48. Well, really, it's only two degrees. Okay. So it looks a lot. These. Okay. It's you can't see the side as much, but this okay, it's only so going from forty eight to fifty one. Yeah. So your each graph has a different scale. Each graph yeah. has a different scale oh. because so there's so many on data this one points. Here's fifty degrees and fifty one degrees. Okay. Oh. Looks okay. But in the main time these keep about fifty degrees. So this is why it looks like so different. Like the whole day it's fifty. Yeah. I might also explain that uh, so the, the west side, where we had two of the thermal couples, one was by the door, one was on the side, which was on the north side there, that was in the original cooler. And then about five years ago, we doubled the size of the cooler and built to the east. Uh, but the, you know, the ventilation or the air handling units that were installed are supposed to be exactly the same in both areas. There's supposed to be one in each corner. So we should have eight, I think, uh, air handling units inside the 
entire pool. Uh, but I don't believe that the control system was ever altered when we built the new system. And so monitoring the temperature in the west side of the building than we are in the east side of the building. That, so that back wall, I think what you found there is probably legitimate. That it's probably just warmer back there because we're not really controlling to that temperature. We're controlling to the west, the other end of the building. And then it would, since we were only able to do this like in October too, it'd be interesting to see how much the sun does affect, like if it was in the summer or when it's really cold outside too, if that affects it. Dead of winter, like January, February versus July, August. And also you, then we could, if we did like a whole year, we could measure to when you guys have the most product going out versus when you're like just sitting there pretty much waiting for the big shipment days. Yeah, and the door is probably open a lot more now. Mm -hmm. And these these were taken end of October, so just for one week. So would you uh, expect more temperature problems in the summer or the winter as far as distribution? Mm -hmm. Probably a yeah, summer, yeah. Time of day, summer, but door opening, <laughs> I would expect, yeah. during the winter. Because I think do the rest of the kind of fans don't cycle. So that would mean that the fans, if it has a heavier cooling load on it in the summer, that means the fans would be on more often mm -hmm. than they were in the winter, which would mean that what? More fluctuation in the winter. Possible. Depending Possible. On the yeah. <coughs> And that would show how much the, like the ones that are against the wall, if that affects it at all, like the sun outside. One of the things you didn't really address either is on the west side of the, the older section, we have racks mm -hmm. in there. Whereas in the newer section, we haven't yet put up the racks. Those, those, yeah. The racks were stored against that 50 degree wall. Yeah. Um, so temperature inside those racks might be a little bit different mm -hmm. talk to bottoms. When we uh, went to place them up, like we wanted to put one like in the middle of the racks where the racks were set up, but it was just we didn't want to like have to dig through your product and stuff. Yeah. So we chose that midpoint between the west and the east side as probably the best placement. So when you put them on the wall, did you like take them to the wall or were they no, offset Not the thermocouple. The not like the wires, yes, but the thermocouple wasn't okay. touching the wall. The thermocouple, yeah, no, we tried to. Like the waves? Yeah. It was it like was, leaning it was, out. It was only like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away from the wall, though, because we didn't have something to like hold it out. But it wasn't, we tried to have it not touch the wall because obviously that would create a different, that'd be a different temperature. And we could only do one height because we didn't want to climb <laughs> or get up there or something. <coughs> Any other questions? Maybe just one point of clarification too so everybody understands what's going on in this warehouse. So, so our, most of our cheese is aged for a year before we sell it. So during that year, uh, the temperature that it's stored at is going to age a little bit differently. So sort of, normally the warmer you age it, more rapidly it's going to go through the aging process. And so our goal is to try to keep it very consistent so that if you age this can for a year and this can made a different time of the year for a year, they should taste pretty much the same. Um, but cans aged for two years should taste a lot different or should have some differences from a can only aged a year. But if you're aging faster at 50 degrees and 40 degrees, a uh, can that was made at the same time, if you open them up, they're going to be a little bit different. One's going to taste a lot more aged than the one that's kept open. So, of course, once people buy the can, take it home, they put it in the refrigerator at what? 37 degrees? So, if you can try to age your cheese at home, it's going to age a little bit slower than what we aged at 45 degrees. So those are the differences we're trying to reduce. Any more questions? Dr. All right, nobody else has any.
any more questions? You mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that the alarm will go off at 40 and 50. But you have points that are greater than 50 on every one of those graphs. And as far as I'm aware, the alarm doesn't go off on a regular basis. What could be happening that that alarm wouldn't go off? They only have one thermometer doing it. And did we find out where the one was? They have it was four thermometers. No, no. It was it eight. In this, in this they have like eight, eight mostly in, in, the, in the west side. And only one of them is alert. And so we're thinking the alert one different. is more towards the middle and the middle side, mm -hmm. which would explain why that one is it's prob it's not sensing the 50 then. Yeah, but also they are not sure if it is it, if it is a 40 and 50. Okay. They he just yeah, say it might be these, so we are not sure. Okay. So, because he didn't know, we weren't sure, so we said 40 or 50 is when they would think it would go off, but... And the alarm doesn't go off for us to hear, it goes off... It's facilities, okay. right? Yes. Facilities yes. operation. Yeah. So okay. I assume Unless facilities is not coming in every single day going, hey, the alarm's going off. Mm -hmm. What type of thermometer is that that's hooked to the alarm system? Is it like a thermocouple? Is it a mercury thermometer? Do you know? He didn't. Mm -hmm. Just curious. The we last should have clarified that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when I ask, they just don't know when to send a me for another person. So try to answer, yeah. and mm -hmm. they don't know. So it'd be more a question sure. for facilities yeah. versus yeah. our contact. So. Okay.